Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review Sorority Slaughterhouse. No time to clown around. Written and directed by David Dakota, starring Eric Roberts, Jessica Morris, and Jean Louise O'Sullivan. Disregarding the completely fictitious IMDb description, this movie is about Eric Roberts, who's sleeping with a sorority sister, and he ends up killing himself within the first 30 seconds and transfers his body into a clown doll named Bobo. Bobo is now slashing up the sexy sorority co-eds, cause he has a raging boner of rage. So what do we like? I'm gonna start with probably the best part of this movie, which is the score and the soundtrack. It's all done by Harry Manfredini, or at least most of it is, and so it sounds really cool when the doll is running around. Like, it sounds like teens are about to get slashed up all the time. It's like a musical sense of foreshadowing. When you watch Jaws, you hear the score, you know the shark's gonna attack. In this film, you hear the score, you know Bobo's just running around ready to kill someone. Yo, are we gonna get quoted for that? It's like Jaws. Which brings me to Bobo. I loved this doll. This little clown doll was absolutely creepy. Like, his facial expressions, just the look. It was just a dead soul inside this doll. Like, that's, like, it's, it's absolutely creepy. The dead soul <laughs> being Eric Roberts. Yeah. I thought the ladies were gorgeous, and being that it is sorority slaughterhouse, you expect to see some hot babes, and we aren't disappointed in that area. I need to preface this like, because it is an indie film, the cinematography in general isn't that good, but there are some ambitious shots. I was actually surprised because we did have some steady cam work, we had some tracking shots, we had a long take, and I thought that was kind of neat because you don't often see it in very low budget movies like this. I think anyone who loves killer doll movies is gonna get a kick of the cinematography. Just because you're getting the POV shots, you're getting those low angles, the like, feet just running so fast, or like the hand climbing the stairs ever so slowly. Like it is cheesy, it's tacky, but that's the charm of a killer doll movie, and they really did get the charm across. I thought it was hilarious. Now let's move on to our dislikes. There is charm when it comes to the doll, but there's also a lot of shitty parts about this whole situation. This is just a little small doll, and the way that it's edited and the way that it's shot, they keep the shots on for so long. When he's climbing stairs, <laughs> it looks like he's taking an hour. And this is a running theme throughout the film. Somebody gets some drain spilled on them. <laughs> that took forever. The way that he's awkwardly holding onto this Drano bottle, walking around with it and trying to undo the cap, it just looks so stupid. So they do insert shots of him talking during a death scene, and like they'll be outside killing, but like the insert shot is like him behind this beige wall. It's just like, hey, we could do this shot where we can animate his mouth, so let's insert it. Yeah, they literally shot like maybe 20 seconds of just the doll <laughs> talking, and they cut it into most of the movie. And speaking of which, speaking of <laughs> editing things into the movie, let's talk about the fucking big elephant in the room that is Eric Roberts. I don't need to see this and the shitty ADR work that is in this movie because it is awful. You guys must have to watch this a lot. It must be frustrating. What's funny about this is when Jay and I first started watching the film, just Jay goes to me and he's like commenting on like, really, how is Eric Roberts even in this movie and how did he sign up for this? There was a film I saw called A Talking Cat where he did the voiceover of the cat. I'm a talking cat but I can only talk to a person once. Probably the most ridiculous movie you'll ever see in your life. We did a little research afterwards. Sure enough, guess who directed A Talking Cat? The same director, David Decato. And we've joked about a movie that I picked up a while ago that's called Leeches. His whole library is just like a bunch of male erotica. And we're gonna do Leeches because it's gonna be hilarious and awesome. He's also done four Puppet Master movies though, so don't forget, he is very experienced with puppets. And not only that, the location. This film is filmed in the most magnificent house you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. It's like he always uses the same house, cause like even in like A Talking Cat, it was this weird mansion. It's like- It's not the same one, but it's like also like a huge fucking house. Yeah. 
I'm curious because if you've ever seen any of his male erotica, like, I haven't, but I'm going to assume that they're all staged in huge mansions. Yeah. And I get it, it's production value. Pay 800 bucks for the day, you got a movie. I think if we produced our show in a huge ass mansion, people would like it a lot more. <laughs> in saying that, we're gonna be launching a Patreon campaign really soon for unrelated reasons. I had issue with the fact that we have all these gorgeous babes in a movie called Sorority Slaughterhouse. And we had no boobs whatsoever. We had no nudity. We didn't have any real gratuitous scenes, both in nudity or deaths, because the death scenes all are garbage. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. Sorority Slaughterhouse is not a great movie. But I think a lot of people will probably have a blast just getting drunk or smoking up, do a couple dabs, not these ones, but you know. <laughs> and then you watch the movie and you're gonna get a kick out of it because it's fucking, it's crazy, it's weird, it's very low budget, but it has like a high production value aesthetic to it. It's, it sits on a weird line for me. <laughs> Eric Roberts did a very weird job. We had babes that I wish got naked, but unfortunately they don't. So m be mindful of that. When you go into this, don't expect nudity. You get none. Don't expect kills. You get none. Why the fuck should I watch this movie then? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Because it's so cringy. Leave us alone. Mm -hmm. Say the black magic word. Go to hell. Mm, lucky guess. Like, you're going to be shaking your head watching this. It's like a cringe compilation. All right, cringe challenge, fucking 2017. You gotta watch this without grimacing even once. <laughs> so with that being said, I'm gonna give this one bodacious booty shot out of five. I was going into this expecting it to be the worst film I've ever seen, the campiest, cheesiest, lamest movie. I gotta be honest with you, it pretty much was but not in a bad way. Like, it's an odd feeling I have right now. I have mixed emotions because I do like this movie. I like the cheesy doll shots of him struggling to get around. I liked looking at all the girls, nudity or not, they looked great. It's a fun time, just not a good film. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this movie two unnecessarily oversized binoculars out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below if you've seen the film. If you haven't and for some reason you wanna check it out, there are links in the description where you can find it. There are also links to where you can find uh, a talking cat movie. Also in the description. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything Bloodbath and beyond.